Hello, hello, and a third hello. It is the Shroomster, and today I have a very special um, article from ResearchGate on, on mushroom cultivation in Tepe Town, um, in, in Tepe Town, Ethiopia. These people were trying to figure out a way of turning their waste into mushroom protein that could feed people, that could um, uh, clean up a lot of the uh, ecological uh, disasters that are being caused as a byproduct of um, this whole you know, sugarcane industry, coffee, all of that that they have going on there. Um, from what I understand, from what's going on in this article, what they're what the the message that they have, and so below me is a little map of Tepe Town, and below that are the you know oyster mushrooms that uh, I, I figured would be a good little visual for uh, showing what they are trying to grow, what they are doing. Um, at least what they are doing at that point in time, you know. I don't remember Ethiopia becoming the uh, the mecca of, uh, of mushrooms, but, you know, maybe in the future, you never know. Uh, on the surface of our planet, around 200 billion tons per year of organic matter are produced through the photosynthetic process. Uh, likely in Ethiopia, large amounts of lignocellulosic wastes are generated through agro-industrial activities in each year. However, the majority of this organic matter is not directly edible by humans and animals and, in many cases, disposed into the environment without any treatment. This leads to serious environmental pollution. And the other thing that they'll, that they'll try and talk about is that, oh, this waste is, you know, it can be turned into biomass. Yeah, it can be turned into uh, into something that cars can end up using that can change the future. No, this stuff isn't going to be turned into that. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding? It is such an intensive process. Like the 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 fact that we have these mushrooms that can not only you know the clean up the toxicity to treat it, but also provide food. It's it's nuts. Why would you want to make some sort of biofuel that takes up way too many resources and in the process probably does more harm than good? Uh, Biorefining process such as mushroom cultivation is the current economically viable biotechnology which involves the production of the protein-rich food, you know what I was saying. Um, the Pleurota species reveal high efficiency in degradation of a wide range of lignocellulosic um, residues such as wheat straw cotton wastes, coffee pulp, corn cobs, sunflower seed holes, wood chips, sawdust, peanut shells, vine prunings, and others into mushroom protein. The productivity of the conversion being expressed by biological efficiency. So they so yeah, they're trying to they're they're trying to find the most efficient way. What waste can they use? to make these oyster mushrooms the quickest with the least amount of you know effort trouble um they want to make this something that is viable which i agree with it should be something that's viable uh and i mean it, it honestly is viable the only thing that is holding it back is interest you know oh mushrooms creepy crawly no these things can help you please let us help you uh we have the malt extract uh, uh, agar, um, agar, whatever you want to call it. I always say agar. Um, ninety-four percent of sorghum is talking about their whole uh, spawn substrate. Uh, pretty, you know, pretty standard stuff right there. Uh, but then they go into their collection of of substrates, their actual substrates, their main substrates, the, the CW meaning the husks and uh, pulp together um, of uh, coffee, coffee waste. Uh, SD, sawdust, and SB, the um, sugarcane, big gas, Vegas, something like that. Uh, I'm not too good with that word. I, you know, it's not a word I exactly use every day. Uh, but the sawdust from the Cortica africana wanza tree that was collected as you'll see later on, it's it's kind of surprising. The 
the the sawdust actually did the worst. Um, the chips, everything like that, actually ended up doing the worst, which was which once again I thought was interesting. It might just be the type of wood, or it might just be that coffee and sugar cane um, waste is so much more tasty to the little mushrooms. Primarily, each substrate means oh yeah, that's the main growth substrates. Uh, uh, they have all of these percentages here, and you know it's. Like those are good percentages, but they do have these graphs down there that we're going to get to um, because there's a lot more to this. It, as you read between the lines, you'll see, just as I've seen, that you know these people aren't exactly well funded. You know, at Ethiopia Tepe Town University, it, you know, it's probably it's I I would assume it's probably the best university in Ethiopia. Uh, maybe there are more university. Maybe I shouldn't even comment on that. But what I do know is that they are not receiving nearly as much funding as any university in the United States. And yet they were still able to do something like this because of how simple it is to do. I'm sure, I'm sure they were funded. Uh, of course, this was funded. You know, this is, this is an actual research article and they do talk about all of those things but but i mean we'll we'll go into it i mean the the bags were watered three times a day and 70 to 80 percent humidity uh were maintained by spraying water on the walls of the room on a daily basis see that's what i'm talking about in order to maintain the humidity they kept spraying the walls with water you know they don't have one of those it's not like they have a martha grow chamber or anything like that um, and why should they? I mean, you can, that, it works. It works. They had the 70 to 80% humidity and they just sprained it on the walls. You know, I, I've never seen that before, but I, I've seen that happen within, you know, little jars, plastic containers. It's, it makes sense. I mean, this all makes sense. It's just far more creative because you have to work with what you have to work with. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying that they are completely foreign in every way, it's just what you have to do. The yield parameters were recorded with respect to time and days. Taken for completion, uh, mycelial, uh, taken for completion, mycelial colonization. Yeah, they, the English isn't very good, but it, who cares? Um, first appearance of pinhead formation, maturity of fruit bodies, uh, pileus uh, diameter and stipe length of matured mushrooms so once again that's the that's the fruiting you know that's the the cap and then the stipe the stem uh, of the matured mushroom number of flushes time interval between flushes and yield or over bioefficiency of flushes on the treatment substrates and so i also thought that that uh, this equation over here uh was pretty cool so the percentage of the yield uh, is equal to the weight of fresh mushrooms harvested over the dry weight of uh, of dry substrate before inoculation times 100. I've looked around and if you guys can tell me what the times 100 part is, like where that comes into play, um, I would I would love that a lot uh, because I really am quite interested in uh, what goes into an equation like that. Um, and, and when I look at all of this, I'm, I, it honestly inspires me. This whole article inspires me in a way that I don't usually get inspired by research. Um, even though I'll, you know, more uh, quite often uh, take a look at, at the research that comes out. Uh, then we have the spawn making, spawn substrate composed of all of that, you know, the 5%, the 1%. The, uh, the moisture content ranging between 50 and 60%. Incubated at room temperature, 21 days for complete mycelial colonization. Um, I think it's complete mycelial colonization of everything. Uh, it it's, was, uh, of the whole substrate was seen within the range of 13 uh, plus or minus a day to 19.3 plus or minus a half a day. The highest mycelial invasion rate in complete uh, colonization of the substrate was observed in, uh, surprisingly enough, the sugarcane. 
which was 13 uh, plus or minus a day, followed by coffee waste, half coffee waste, half uh, sugar cane, which was uh, 13.7 days plus or minus half a day. And then coffee waste, uh, the, uh, the sawdust, 25%, the sugar cane, 25%, that was all 14.2 plus or minus a day and a half. And it just keeps going up from there, especially when you get more into the percentages, because at that point, you are starting to take away what really did the best, which was the sugar cane. Just pure sugar cane ended up doing better uh, than anything else. With all of the mixtures, with all of the percentages, it didn't matter. It didn't matter at all. It was it was just straight up that, which I think is really cool. Like I never I never thought about uh, sugar cane waste. I just I don't even think about sugar cane. Like, <laughs> but it's cool. It's really cool. So, the first primordial appears after uh, 20 plus or minus a day to uh, nearly 30 days plus or minus half a day of uh, spawn, days uh, of spawn inoculation from spawn inoculation, of spawn inoculation, something like that. Lowest days were taken by um, sugarcane and highest days were taken by sawdust. So yeah, their English is a little off, but like I said, who cares? Uh, we go down once again. Furthermore, their spent can be used as cattle feed, fertilizer, or landfill. Therefore, cultivation of mushroom on agro-industrial lignocellulose uh, losses, uh, waste provides multidisciplinary advantages for human being animals as well as for the ecosystem. So even after all of that, even after all of that, that waste can continue to live on, can continue to go back into the environment. That is great. That is, that's perfect. Who wouldn't want that? Who wouldn't want that? Well, apparently for some reason, a lot of, I don't know. I don't know why this isn't a much bigger thing. It, this is nuts to me. This is all nuts to me. So we once again we go back to the substrate, um, and they, it gives a good idea of everything. Uh, they like they said before they did the substrate colonization, mordial appearance, fruit body formation, and maturation after pinning. Um, they have the first, second, third flush stipe length, alias diam diameter uh, between the first and second flushes, how many days that was, between the, the second and third flushes, how many days that was. And you look at um, what was the best, and the best was these uh, first, well, these first two, um, and then the combination of the first two. And then really, when you enter sawdust into the equation, it just it just takes so much longer, which I find in, I, I find surprising uh, that it, the, it's the sawdust. But you know, uh, we we so in spite of the presence of huge amount of lignocelluloses wastes and high diversity of wild edible mushrooms in Africa. Oh, maybe maybe Ethiopia is the mecca of mushrooms. Maybe I should be uh, maybe I should be going there to look for the diversity of, of wild edible mushrooms. That, that actually sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, Ethiopia still very little is known. Um, but uh, P. austriatus uh, can be successfully grown on almost all aforementioned wastes and their combination. But pure coffee waste gave better results, followed by pure um, sugar, no, yeah, pure sugarcane and pure sawdust that that showed the least inhibitory activity. Wait a second. So wait, it said uh, waste in that combination, but pure coffee waste gave the best result, gave better results, followed by pure. Hmm, really? Better results in tor Maybe I'm just looking at the, the between stages. Um... Well, I guess, yeah, with, with stipe length and, and at least diameter, but I mean, the caps were apparently 
much larger and the stipe was less. It's kind of interesting that it switched. Um, and you know, you might be saying, well, there needs to be multiple studies. There needs to be, uh, later on, they do mention other studies and they, and they mention what they think of those other studies. It's like, hey, we disagree with you. Hey, we agree with you. Hey, we use some of your research in order to help us with our research. Hey, we like you. They mentioned like five other, you know, research articles. It's pretty interesting. I mean, you go back to uh, complete mycelial colonization in days. I mean, this took 16 days. This took 13. But hey, what I know, what I know. Oh, maybe, maybe what they're mostly talking about right here is once again the the bioefficiency, the the percentage over six hundred grams of substrate. I mean, this is it's fifty three um, uh, percent, I believe, or is that? Yeah, I believe that I, what they're talking about is is the percentage. It's it's far more efficient than other things because they have the then they have that for the second flush. They have that for the third flush, and it's interesting seeing each one go down. Um, because of course, you know, the mass is becoming gonna become less and less. But um yeah, from here, apparently it had the most efficiency. Um but you know, I mean that's that's really the gist of it talk about variability and pinning time i read through it and there wasn't i i felt like there should have been more explanation to bio efficiency i mean maybe this that's what they're talking about right here bioconversion efficiency of substrate showed statistically significant variation uh, among substrate and flush types and the combination provide relatively highest percentage of bioefficiency, bioconversion efficiency, while uh, while the sawdust gave the least. Okay, okay, yeah, I would have would have liked to have known more about it. And in fact, when you read through it, they kind of repeat themselves a couple of times, especially on their mission statement. They mention it like three or four times throughout it. Uh, maybe that's what you're supposed to do. I don't know. But, you know, the, at their conclusion, I, I like it. I like what they're leaving you off with. Uh, P. Comer uh, successfully grown and obtained yield in all substrates except pure uh, C. africana and some combination substrates. Those contained uh, sawdust. Um, this indicates the possibility of managing coffee waste through the production of uh, P. Ostriatus. Um, compensate for the protein gap, has the chance to convert into nutritious and medical mushroom through cultivation, and that's really where they, they leave it off. And then they give a huge amount of references. Look at that, 33, 33 different references. They really wanted to get this correct. And it's from all over the world, you know, it's from it's from the USA, it's from China, it's from uh, you can go through there and, and look at all of them. But I thought this was an interesting enough article to share with you guys on hopefully figuring out, looking at stuff in your own life. What waste do you have that could honestly be used again? You know, you can throw it in a landfill. I mean, that's how no, everyone else does it. It's not like it's the end of the world or you're somehow this terrible person. I, I don't subscribe to that belief, by the way, that humans are innately terrible for existing and that we're the worst thing that's ever happened to the planet. I, I think that's all I think that's all garbage. No. Like this it's it's okay, but I have a certain level of respect for people who make the extra effort to just just do that in their everyday life. And so my respect, my hats off uh, to you guys and gals and everyone in between out there who ends up doing this kind of thing, who, who looks for these opportunities to, um, to go through this, 
biorefining process with with what you have, with what you throw away. Um, I am sure. I am sure that uh, fungi are the future of of the most natural way of helping the planet get back into a really smooth swing of things. I think they are an untapped potential within the pantheon <laughs> of, uh, of, of what is mycology. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, hey, please go ahead and comment. That's all I really ask. Like I do ask for for you know people to subscribe. I, I I like that. I appreciate it. But I mostly honestly just like the comments because I like talking to you guys about this sort of thing. And I hope that you guys were as interested in this and found this as fascinating as I did. Like I I had to go through, read it, mark everything up, and I believe that I'm just gonna I'm gonna do this as a journal article for my. Uh, biology class for my my biology lab we need to go through an article and, and do a whole write-up on it um, and uh, and I can think of no better article to do a write-up on than something like this uh, pretty pretty fantastic and and my hats off once again to these two people uh, Dagnu and Abel uh, fantastic and they, and what's what's worse is that there's only like 12 reads these people don't have the the recognition that they deserve from the scientific community that's when i when i look at this i just think you the scientific community has it wrong man they 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 have it way more wrong than people like to admit anyway that's enough of me see you later love you guys bye, -bye.